So today we're gonna take a very special question and this question would be important for if you are applying for any mixed signal domain because in this question the concepts of basic analog or the RC circuits are also got checked. So for mixed signal it is a great question and also if you are applying for a backend VLSI job and the question is this. This is your the practical output of any CMOS inverter. So here this one this blue curve if you can see it it is your input and if you give it to a CMOS inverter the practical CMOS inverter then you will get something like this this curve this yellow curve there would be some overshoot and there should be some undershoot and the question would be why this is happening and actually for the first time when I designed a layout or CMOS inverter and I got a result like this I thought I have done some mistakes but actually that is the thing you will get this overshoot and undershoot and if in your CV you have some project on layout and they ask you this question you and you unable to explain them then it won't be a good thing right so let us get decode this thing like why it is happening but before i start please like my video because this is the only currency which motivate me to keep on making this type of videos so before i go to this question explaining this question let me take one of the circuit and that is your capacitor because you can't answer this question if you don't know about your capacitor so a capacitor is, is a very nice device it can store charges but it has a nice property and that is that in any moment for example at zero second and at zero plus second if it have across it a voltage of for example 2.5 volt then at zero plus second just the next moment it will continue to be 2.5 volt irrespective of anything happen in the circuit you can change do any changes it will be 2.5 only and this is the property of any capacitor if you just remember or if you have done solved few of the question in the rc circuit where you have a switch and they said that yeah at this moment we have closed the switch then what will be the output so there these concepts are used in your basic rc circuits so that's why i told you that if you can answer this question that means your rc concepts are somehow quite clear or imply that you are perfectly suited for a mixed signal domain job also so you need to keep this thing in your mind so let's get back to our answer so to give you this answer let me quickly draw our inverter again so this is your wonderful inverter i have v out and i have a v in and if you just remember my last video you could remember that we have a a capacitor in between them and this is nothing like we have put this capacitor it is a parasitic capacitance we don't want this capacitance here but because of the physics of this device we will have this capacitance we can't avoid it we can make it smaller but we can't avoid it make it to zero so we will be having a capacitance and this is a dangerous capacitance because it is in between your input and output it can couple your input and output and if we and if anything is coupling your input and output that means it can just bypass all the circuit and directly it can couple what is in the input to the output so that's why this capacitor is very dangerous and due to this capacitance only we have this phenomena which we don't like because due to this overshoot and undershoot the delay of inverter increase so see uh, let me draw this thing little more nicely so this red would be your input your input is rising slowly we will be having some delay in the input also i am just making it enlarged so what would be our output at this moment now let's consider that at the output side we have a high logic that is our five so that means one part of our capacitor is tied to five volt now at the input what is happening and that is at the input you are rising the input level whenever we are having 5 volt at the output at the input we will for sure will be having a zero or the low logic that is the inverter right so now we are changing our input from a logic zero to some high logic right and at this moment only because you are changing 
the voltage at the input of your capacitance and these things are happening very fast in the nanosecond right i have just enlarged it so you are changing this in a movement from 0 volt to for say 2.5 volt or any volt but you are increasing it from 0 volt right so that means here previously we had a 0 the other side of our capacitance and across this capacitance what we have we have 5 volt that is sure right we have a 5 volt but now i am saying no i am increasing it and how i am increasing it very fast in the nanosecond to some voltage say point 5 volt so that means we are forcing our capacitance that hey across u the voltage would be 4.5 in the next moment 4.5 volt right 5 minus 0 0.5 4.5 volt but capacitor will oppose this thing and how they will oppose this thing they will say okay at the output i will increase the voltage so by how much i need to increase the voltage i will increase it to 5.5 volt and that means we are overshooting in the output node if this is your 5 volt it will overshoot 2.5.5 volt and at the exact moment because it is 0.5 volt probably your nmos is still off but if you increase it little more this nmos will come into play because in the input side you are going more than the threshold voltage of this nmos so this nmos will get on and then it will start discharging the output node also so that's why we have a instantaneous shoot overshoot due to the capacitance and then our nmos will come into play and then it will discharge the output node to the ground level now you could say that here in the initial stage our capacitor is not allowing to change the voltage across it but when nmos is on it is allowing to discharge it yes because it is happening after some moment at the exact moment at that zero and then zero point plus zero plus there is no definition of zero to zero point plus but yeah you can understand roughly that it is in a nanosecond so at that moment whenever your input will switch from zero to positive side we will have a overshoot and at the exact moment our nmos will get on and the overshoot thing will get reduced to zero and the exact thing will happen at the other part also because at this moment what is happening your output side have a zero volt right and at the input node you have a five volt perfect across the capacitance we have five volt but whenever i'll try to decrease it for say 4.5 the capacitor will oppose that hey i need the five volt only so it will go to minus 0.5 volt and that's why i'll have a a little undershoot and after that our pmos will come into play and then pmos will start charging the capacitance to the high logic the 5 volt so that is the phenomena what so that is the phenomena what is happening here and you can see our delay is also getting increased because due to this overshoot only we are taking little more time to go from top to zero and from zero to high so that's why it is a non ideality of our design but it will happen we can just take care that our this capacitance whenever we are designing our layout we should keep all our sincerity so that we can reduce this capacitance now we have one question and that is you probably have experience that anytime you do some heavy task with your mobile phone like playing games that time mobile get discharged more faster right but my question is that uh, in our digital circuit what thing actually govern this thing like uh, battery life power management so we need to study more about the power aspects of our CMOS inverter like how the power are consumed there we are taking CMOS it's a small circuit we can explain the everything there in detail but yeah absolutely true that the thing we will observe in CMOS would be exactly true for complex circuits also so in our next video we'll start we'll discuss about the power dissipation of our CMOS inverter like how heavy work drain our battery faster from the VLSI sense VLSI engineering sense so I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.